What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Xavier Law Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Isaiah, and today, y'all, we have another 2024 WNBA team preview, and we have the Indiana Fever, so without further ado, let's get into it. All right, y'all, so let's get into the Indiana Fever strengths, and I think their first strength is that they have elite shot creators in the backcourt. You talk about a backcourt that has Kaylin Clark, one of the best shot creators I've ever seen, Kelsey Mitchell, one of the best shot creators currently in the league, and I mean, y'all, this is just a dynamic scoring backcourt, two women. They can score the ball at a high level. They can create their own shot at a high level. They can get their own shot off at a high level. And they do not need anybody else to help them generate offense, right? They can just say, hey, give me the ball, get out the way, and we're going to get buckets. Y'all, I expect them to have a lot of uh, uh, broken ankles this year. I expect them, or I I should say, I expect them to break a lot of ankles. I expect them to have a lot of highlight plays because, man, they are just two electrifying scoring guards. You look at their next trip, y'all. They have deep brain shooters all over the roster. Again, I just mentioned Kelsey Mitchell and Caitlin Clark, y'all. Not only are they elite scorers, elite shot coaches, but they also are elite three point shooters. They can shoot it from deep. I mean, we have seen Caitlin Clark and Kelsey Mitchell hit 30 and 40 foot, a 40 foot three point shots, y'all. They signed Katie Lou Sam- Samuelson during the offseason formula of the LA Sparks. And when she played a couple years ago, she's one of the best three point shooters in the league. And she can shoot it from very, very deep as well. And then off the bench, you have Grace Burke. Burger, who y'all know great she did not have a very good year last season but i expect her to improve i expect her to be a better three-point shooter like she was at college of indiana and i expect her to be able to shoot it from really deep so you talk about right there y'all there's four players that can shoot it and shoot it well but also shoot it from very 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 deep so you love this for the indiana field because you can never have enough shooters y'all you look at their next strength they have great post players who can finish around the rim you talk about a team that has leah boston at power forward and Alyssa smith at center two players y'all they can really post up they can finish with their left or right hand and the list smith she's a little bit different because she can put the ball on the deck go to the basket and finish with her left hand whereas Aaliyah is going to really like post you up more than the then list smith is going to do she's going to is going to post you up she's going to back you down she has great footwork she's going to hit you with that little spin move and then finish with her left or right hand but both of them uh are really great post players and they can really finish at the rim at a high level and then y'all you look at the last strength for the Indiana Fever is that they have four players who can score 20 or more points any given game. And y'all, I know some people think that this is a bad thing. They feel like, well, if you have too many scores, then they're going to step on each other's toes. Y'all think this is a great problem to have because you can never have enough scoring. Y'all, there are so many great scores across our league now. You have to be able to keep up, right? If you cannot put points on the board, you're going to lose. I don't care how great you are as a, as a defensive team. You have to be able to keep up and be able to score points, y'all. And the Fever have that. Because, again, Kelsey Mitchell, great score. Caitlin Clark, great score. Aaliyah Boston, great score. And this Smith, great score. Four players, y'all, who I expect to have multiple games this year where all of them have 20 or more points in the same game. Okay, seriously. Yeah, they remind me a lot of the Las Vegas Aces. The Aces have four players, Jackie Young, Kelsey Mitchell, excuse me, Jackie Young, Kelsey Plum, Asia Wilson, Chelsea Gray, they can score 20 or more points. So did the Fever again, Kelsey Mitchell, Kaylin Clark, and Elizabeth and Aaliyah Boston. Expect the Indiana Fever to be one of the highest score team, highest score teams in the WNBA this season. But y'all, let's get into the Indiana Fever weaknesses. I think their first weakness is their perimeter defense. You talking about a team last year that was not a very good defensive team because they simply did not have great perimeter defenders, and they still don't. Outside of Erica Willie, y'all, this team is really lacking, right? Because I think Celeste Taylor can be a good defender, but she's a rookie. I think Kaylin Clark can be a good defender, but she's a rookie. So you talk about right now, the best perimeter defender is Erica Willer, and you literally have nobody else outside of her. Not a great thing to have, y'all. I really was surprised that the Indiana Fever did not try to go out and acquire veteran defenders that are proven that they're elite defenders in this league, but they opted to kind of roll with these young players. Let's see what these young players can do. You look at their next weakness, y'all. They are an inexperienced team. You're talking about a team that has high expectations, a team that we're expecting to make the playoff. The problem is only two of their players on this roster have ever been in the playoffs, and that is Erica Wheeler and Katie Lou Sampson. Y'all, Erica Wheeler, though, the last time she was in the playoffs, that was way back in 2016. So even Erica Wheeler hasn't been in the playoffs in a very long time. Let's see how the Fever are going to be able to handle that pressure, handle the expectations, y'all, of being a team that a lot of people are expecting to make the playoffs, to be maybe a sleeper pick to win an entire championship, right? So let's see if they can handle all those expectations. It's going to be very interesting, y'all, 
to see if the at the end of the season, right, if there's five games left and Indiana Fever have to win four of those games to make it to the playoffs, can they do it? Or they're going to be kind of – they're going to get nervous, they're going to get too scared, and they're not going to be able to finish it off and go to the playoffs. Let's see. And then, y'all, I think their final weakness is that they have a weak bench. Out Again, outside of Erica Wheeler, this is just a very young, inexperienced bench, a bench that has not proven anything. They have, you know, Victoria Saxton coming off the bench, Lexi Hall coming off the bench, Grace Berger coming off the bench. But, y'all, those players – they just you cannot trust them, right? Because they haven't proven up to this point that they can be trusted on to be significant significant contributors off your bench. Again, right now it's only Erica Wheeler, so I don't love that at all. All right, y'all. Let's get into my statistical projections. And I have Kelsey Mitchell averaging 17.7 points per game, 4.0 assists per game, and 95 made threes out. Kelsey Mitchell, once again, I mean, she's just a great player, a great scorer. Um, I think if you know they didn't have Caitlin Clark on this roster, I feel like uh, she probably could score 20 points per game. Kelsey Mitchell could. But because you have Kaylin Clark, you know, to go along with Aaliyah Boston and Alyssa Smith, I think the scoring is going to be a little bit more spread out. But this is still going to be a fantastic year for Kelsey Mitchell. Kaylin Clark, y'all have her averaging 16.3 points per game, six and a half rebounds per game, 7.1 assists per game, and 1.7 steals per game. I think Kaylin Clark is absolutely going to stuff the stats. Y'all, I think she's going to have a rookie season very similar to Sabrina Inescu, where Sabrina, she was averaging like 18, 6, and 7. I think Kaylin Clark is going to be around that. Aaliyah Boston, y'all have her averaging 15 points per game, 8.6 rebounds per game, one and a half steals per game, and one and a half blocks per game. Last year, Leah, she averaged about 14 points per game. And I feel like, again, if they didn't have Caitlin Clark on this team, she probably could be around 17, 18. But once again, y'all, with Caitlin Clark, it's just really going to even things out, spread the scoring out. But this is going to be another fantastic year for Leah. She should be an all star yet again with these numbers. And then Alyssa Smith, y'all have her averaging 14.8 points per game and nine and a half rebounds per game. I think Alyssa Smith, she's really kind of getting lost in the sauce, right? Because yeah, we're talking about Kaylin Clark, we're talking about Kelsey Mitchell, and we're talking about Aaliyah Boston. But I think people forget, y'all, the list of is a really, really good player in her own right. She's a player last year that averaged about 15 points and nine rebounds. I think she's going to be very similar to that output again this year. And the list of man, she's a rising star in this league, and I'm a big fan of her. All right, y'all, so let's get into Zay's crazy predictions. And my first crazy prediction is that Christy Size wins Coach of the Year. Y'all, last season, the Indiana Fever won 13 games. And I was very surprised. I thought, I thought they were going to win like six or seven games. So I think Christy Size did a really solid job her uh, her first year as the Fever head coach, all things considered, when no one expected this team to even be that competitive. I thought the Fever, again, thought they were going to really be a six or seven win team. But they ended up being like a somewhat decent team. Right? They were definitely a solid offensive team, bad defensive team. But that, you know, that kind of evens it out to be a decent team. But I just like what Christy Size is about as a head coach, y'all. She's tough. She's defensive minded. She's hardcore. I think she's going to steal that in her team this year. My second crazy prediction, y'all, is that Kayla Clark wins a three point contest. I think Kayla Clark is going to be in a three point contest. Now, obviously, we don't know if she is or not, but I just I think she will be. And if she's in the yard, then she's going to win it. I think Kayla Clark is already one of the best shooters in the league. And I just feel like she's going to win a three point contest if she's in it. And then, y'all, my third and final crazy prediction is that the Fever leads the league in three pointers made. Again, like I mentioned earlier, I mean, they just have some elite shoes on the team Kelsey Mitchell, Kaylin Clark, Katie Lou Sampson. And then you're hoping that Grace Berger, she takes that next step. If she does, y'all, I mean, this is a team that should average probably like 10 to 12 made threes per game. I mean, they're just going to be shooting a lot of threes and they're going to be making a lot of threes. All right, y'all, so let's get into my record predictions. I think best case for the Indiana Fever is that they go. 23 and 17. This will be a 10 game improvement from where they were last year. And this could happen, right? If Kaylin Clark comes in and immediately, you know, is one of the better players in the league, it's Celeste Taylor as a rookie. She comes in and proves to be a really good defender, really good three point shooter. If Grace Berger, if she takes in that jump, if Victoria Sachs and Lexi off, they finally give you something off the bench. And then, you know, if Kelsey Mitchell, Aaliyah Boston, and Alyssa Smith, they continue to continue on their uh, progression, then I think this could be uh, a 23 win team, could be potentially a top four, top five seed uh, in the league. And we could be like, wow, this fever team is a legit contender year one under with Kaylin Clark, you know, and the rest of the crew. Worst case, though, y'all, is that they go 16 and 24 and that they only have a three game improvement, that their perimeter defense is just so bad to overcome their great defense, even, or excuse me, overcome their great offense. Even though, once again, y'all, the fever can really score the ball, but their defense is just, you know, too, too shaky. And it could end up biting them in the tail. I mean, they really could. And then also, you know, if Kaylin Clark and Celeste Taylor, they struggles, struggles as rookies, then yeah, the fever can only have a three game improvement but y'all my prediction is that the fever go 20 and 20 have a seven game improvement and i think this will be good enough to give them the eighth spot uh, in the conference y'all again 
Am I expecting the Fever to be a great team? No, but they're definitely going to show significant improvements. Again, you have a really good big four with Caitlin Clark, Kelsey Mitchell, Aaliyah Boston, and Alyssa Smith. I expect those young ladies to have great seasons, to really score a lot of points, and to really, really, really help this team get back to the playoffs for the first time since 2016. So there you have it, man. That was my 2024 WNBA team preview of the Indiana Fever. Remember, y'all, laugh is good message, so make sure you get your daily dose. Y'all know I'm an Indiana man. I love y'all. God bless. Pa-pa-pa-pa-pa. Peace.